Hi, this is Bobby here. I wanted to make a video today to show some of my sewing projects. I know some people watch this channel to see vacuum cleaner videos and others watch it for the sewing machine videos. So I work a lot these days and I haven't had time to make a lot of videos lately. But for the people who are interested in the sewing side of things, I thought I would just show some examples of what I do with my machines. So I'm primarily a quilter, so I usually make quilts. Uh, usually art quilts or small mini quilts. I don't like to make large quilts, um, but I also don't sew garments or clothes. I do mend my clothes sometimes if they need it, but uh, let's go ahead and just start right in with the pictures so I can introduce some projects. So this first quilt that we have here is a quilt that I started on a hand crank machine that I bought, and it uh, was made entirely on the hand crank. I have not finished it yet, but uh, I did make the entire thing on the quilt, uh, on the hand crank machine and it was fun to do. I have it here sitting on the electric machine just for the picture, but I haven't quilted it yet. It still needs to be finished, so that will be done soon. Okay, this blue blob is a mini uh, stuffed sewing machine plush that I made. I bought a pattern online and made that, so uh, you know, I love sewing machines, so I thought that was cute to make, but I, um, I didn't like making it. It wasn't fun because it was a 3D object and as a quilter I usually sew 2D objects, flat objects, so it was a little bit challenging, but I like the way it turned out. Uh, the pattern did not have a face on it. I wanted to make mine a little more personalized, so I put a little face on it, and I thought that was cute. This is an elephant quilt that I made for a coworker. I haven't finished it yet, but uh, this is actually applique, if you see that. That's actually applique with the embroidery machine. So I bought a pattern and basically I just laid the fabric down and then sewed the embroidery design over it and cut off the excess fabric, sewed it again, and the results are perfect. The applique looks really good. Uh, the only problem with it is that uh, you know you have to find the exact pattern that you want if you do something like that. So it's a little limiting if you don't have digitizing software and can't make your own, but it is really precise. So that still needs to be finished. These are my so easy tables. I bought these, I think, last March, and so I like these because they put the bed of the machine level with the sewing surface. So uh, then you're not fighting over the the hump of the machine. It, you know, the quilt sometimes, if, especially if it's a big one, will actually pull against you the gravity and the weight uh, when when your machine is higher than the table surface. So I really like that these tables put the bed of the machine level with the rest of the table. This is a string quilt that I work on from time to time. Uh, there are one inch strips of fabric sewn to six and a half inch square paper foundations to keep them straight. Um, and that is my backup project when I can't think of anything else to work on at social sewing events. So I've got about 20 of these squares so far and um, it's not done yet. I still, I don't know how big I'm gonna make it, but I'm just seeing where it goes. Yeah, this was the biggest quilt I've done so far, and I'm not finished with it yet. This was my very first quilt that I made in a quilting class, um, like eight years ago. So my very first class, that, that shop has since closed, but um, I did quilt it about a year ago. And so um, it's a straight line quilting in the ditch. I quilted all the ditches with a straight line with the walking foot. And um, I haven't bound it yet, so it still needs to be bound, but other than that, uh, it'll be done once I finish that. I had it set up in the living room with a bunch of tables put all around it for support because it was very heavy, so that uh, still needs to be completed, but it was fun to work on. This is a laundry bag that I started to make uh, to hang laundry in, and that is also not finished, but it's in progress. This is a vacuum cleaner applique. And the vacuum cleaner applique uh, is not done either. I got stuck on the curtains trying to make them realistic, so that still needs to be finished. Um, but when I finish that, I'll hang that on the wall, and that'll be a nice, fun project to kind of combine my passions of sewing and vacuum cleaners. Okay, this is a mini Bargello quilt that I made on this vintage Straight Stitch Brother machine. And uh, it was just fun. I made it for no reason, just to practice uh, matching seam allowances, things like that. And it, I did a pretty precise job. I'm proud of myself for that one. Uh, but I don't have any plans for it. I'm just going to make it and hang it up and keep it or something. I don't know. I, I, there's no plan for it. I'm not 
going to give it to anybody or do anything special with it or make it bigger. I'm just that's going to be it once I quilt it, and it'll just be something that I can use to showcase my my skill a little bit, I guess. But I think it's cute anyway. Uh, that pin cushion down here on the right, I also made. Uh, and it's like a box shaped pin cushion so that was my first time doing something like that sewing themed fabric with irons around the edge I thought that was a cute fabric so that's a perfect pin cushion uh, for my purposes this is a paper pieced heart uh, wall hanging that I made and uh, it's not I quilted it but I still uh, need to finish the binding so that was fun I like paper piecing it's uh, it's really precise it's a little bit wasteful you waste fabric doing that uh, but it's very precise, so I like to do that. This was a fabric and paper card that I made for my cousin's wife. They had me up for dinner a few months ago when she was having a birthday, so I thought it would be fun to make that. That's the front. This is the inside. I made a cake over here out of fabric. And I kind of sketched it with black thread, just a straight line. Uh, through the cardstock, I, I just glued the fabric down with a glue stick and then sewed around the perimeter of everything with black thread. Uh, the hearts are also fabric. The rest is all just cardstock. These are paper piece sewing machines that I made to make covers uh, for some sewing machines. So I thought those turned out well. They were fun to make. Uh, I still need to embellish them and then make the covers, but I have those at least. This is my light box. I am in this picture I'm actually working on a soccer ball to make a pillow that is soccer themed for somebody and so I'm not done with it yet but I printed a picture online and just traced it and then cut the fabric to those shapes to make that so that is my soccer ball in fabric uh, that I used my light box to create and then that will be the background the green fabric there um, this is my Viking machine that I got I haven't done a video of this yet but I got a Viking designer SE last December used for six hundred dollars and I love it um, it's really a fun machine, so I still use my brother and my Bernina that I already have videos of uh, regularly as well. I love all my machines and use them regularly, but this Viking has the automatic presser foot um, that goes up and down by itself, along with a million other features, so it's fun. Um, I don't like some things about it. It's not perfect, but it works well, so I'm glad to have it in my sewing arsenal. This is my brother and Bernina sitting side by side. I wanted to show you that I did get a multifunction foot control for the brother. So it's a much beefier pedal that adds heel tap functionality. It says baby lock on my pedal because my brother didn't have brother branded ones, but it works on my machine. It's actually made for the baby lock twin of my machine. Um, but it lets me step on the, the back of the, the pedal to do, um, you know, a, a single stitch or reverse stitch, thread cut, um, or needle up down. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, the original pedal, you can see the size comparison was right here um, on the left, and that one is pretty cheap. Uh, it's lightweight. There's no heel tap. It's it's very basic, so I like the other one much better. This was a project that I made for some police officers uh, that, that died in my local area recently, very recently. I delivered this to the police station last week after working on it for an entire week. I was up three nights in a row doing this. Um, and then doing it during the day as well. So it did take me an entire week to do that. Um, and so I brought it to the police station last week, and of course I didn't even get to see any police officers. I gave it to the receptionist, and she said she loved it, but I didn't make it for her. But she was behind bulletproof glass, and uh, you know she said she would give it to them later once I left. She couldn't even come out of the glass until I left. So very strange. I think they're very scared of the public right now because these two officers were killed. But I wanted to just show some love to the police and just honor them uh, in that way. So. I did do that, um, even though I'm, I'm disappointed I didn't get to see a reaction. Um, I didn't do it for that reason, but still I don't think I would ever do something like that again. It just wasn't worth it. That's the back of it. And then this is an applique project that I started years ago, and uh, I've since sold that machine. That was my brother PC420. I actually got rid of that and sold it to a beginning quilter who needed a good machine. So. Um, for, for not a lot of money, I sold it for $200, and so, um, and I gave her an hour lesson on it. She still seems to love it, so that's good. But, um, this is just a, my first attempt at applique. I did this like 10 years ago, it was a really long time ago, but, um, you know, I just left it like that for years, and it was just unfinished, and I, I never really had a plan for it. And then, uh, when I got the Viking, I turned it into that, so that is because the Viking has a really good satin stitch, a really good quality true satin stitch instead of just an adjusted zigzag 
so if you look at it, you know, the edges are, are really good of all the shapes because the, um, they're really good quality, they're really tight, and, you know, it just looks really good because the sad stitch on the Viking is such an amazing quality. I also quilted this thing with a straight line diagonal grid, as you can see, with the walking foot. Um, I did each line in a different color of embroidery thread, so I thought that kind of tied into the different colors of fruit and vegetables there. Um, and I really like that blue fabric that I have for a border. I'm almost out of that fabric, uh, but I really like that. Okay, and this is a camper-themed uh, wall hanging that I made for a friend. I bought that at the same shop where I bought this uh, this lamp that you see here and the Viking machine. I also bought a, a uh, kit that included the fabric and the pattern and all of those things for this project. So. I, uh, I'm working on that still. It's not finished yet, but I have a friend who's obsessed with campers, so you'll see a couple more camper projects in here as well. This is just a stack of my machines, just on the on the shelf. I don't have them like that anymore because I've moved that shelf and repurposed it for fabric, but this was about a year ago. Uh, I had a friend give me this serger, which is a vintage baby lock that was made by Jugi, and I don't make clothes, but I do sometimes like to seal the raw edges of things. So really good quality all metal serger it's heavy it's powerful uh, it weighs a ton it'll probably live longer than I do um, the faff down here on the floor I was borrowing from that same friend and that's also the friend who sold me the two vintage machines this first green brother and the hand crank so that lady is really important to me she's a very special sewing friend um, and so that was her faff and she I, I borrowed it for about a year and just played with it to see if I like faffs I don't by the way um, I'm a Bernina brother Janome kind of guy but um, you know, and I don't even own a Janome, I just like them, uh, but, you know, I, I like Brother and Bernina and Viking a lot, but I'm not a, really a fast fan, and that's okay if other people are, I just don't happen to like the way they look, sound, or feel. Um, but, you know, I borrowed it just to see what the IDT, the Integrated Dual Transporters, or Dual Feed, was all about, and she has since sold that machine, I returned it to her, and she's also sold it, so it basically doesn't exist anymore. Uh, that's the camper quilt that I've made. Um, for my friend who loves campers. I did also add horizontal green sashing between each of the rows, but that's not pictured here. Uh, but that still needs to be quilted and bound. I do have borders on it, but that's as far as I got so far. This was a Christmas card that I made, all fabric for a friend. Uh, the cool thing about this one is that I sealed the edges of the batted uh, sides and pieces, you know, there's batting in the middle of each layer. Um, with the serger, so that was a nice easy way to do it, and I used a red and green thread in the fab in the uh, serger. I used realistic wood grain fabric uh, on the on the bottom of the Christmas tree, so it's kind of simple and wonky and whimsical. I like it. That's the kind of thing I like to do. Um, you know, she likes turtles. She's actually obsessed with turtles, so I did a little turtle themed Christmas thing for her, and uh, so that was fun. And there's the back of it. I always sign my name with free motion when I make something, and sometimes I'll put a heart there as well, I usually do. Um, my Bernina has a turtle stitch on it, so I actually did that going both directions um, on the back. I thought that was fun. This is a sample of my fabric and that I, that I just bought one day. I was on a shopping haul and I just went crazy buying fabric, so that is that. Okay, this is a pillow that I made for a coworker. It's all raw edge applique, so that was really fun to do, but I actually made that based on this, which I made years ago, like 10 years ago. This is a free pattern online. I used the same background as you can see. Uh, it was just an old pillowcase that I thought was perfect for this application. Um, so I used that same fabric, what I had left of it, to make the background for that, because I thought it was really a nice background. Uh, you know, this one was the first one I made. It's a wall hanging just for myself, and I liked it so much that when I needed to make a pillow for a coworker to cheer her up about some stuff, that I um, I basically used the same pattern, even the same background. I just changed some of the fabrics and made a pillow instead of a wall hanging. I like the the red cornerstones on the edges, on the corners. Those are fun, um, you know. And then the back of it, it looks like that. So I just you know, uh, typed a little message and variegated thread, and then I, I signed my name again at the bottom. Uh, this is the heart paper piece project that is quilted and partially bound, so that still needs to be finished. Some of my irons are here, so I also love irons. You can tell I love vacuum sewing machines and irons, but um, I have gotten rid of the orange ones since then. Um, it never worked to start with. It was given to me for free, but 
It's a reliable. I bought a new reliable since just to try the brand. I've also gotten a new Rowenta since. My Aliso has developed some problems, the blue one since, um, but I still have all the other irons in that picture. Uh, the Laura Star, the one here at the bottom with, that is a boiler connected to the the handpiece is by far my favorite. It's a um, it's a Swiss made contraption. They, uh, I mean, new. They're like two thousand dollars, but they're amazing. And you know, if my used one died tomorrow, I would pay fifty bucks for that thing. By the way, um, if it died tomorrow, I would I would pay two twenty five hundred dollars for a new one. That's how much I love it. Um, I I don't know if I'd get a brand new one actually because the new ones are not as good of quality. But um, I would probably scour the used market for another model just like that, or I would get a different brand. They have other brands that are that, that are kind of the same thing, uh, but I don't I don't know how much better they are than the new Laura Stars. The new ones are really poor quality, unfortunately. Unfortunately, uh, the old ones are really built like a tank, but they don't make parts for them anymore. So it's kind of tough to fall in love with something that you know can't be fixed. These were my sewing machines on the way to sit and sew in my old car. Um, so basically I was just buckling them up for the ride so they didn't get hurt and they behaved pretty well on that day. They didn't fight in the back seat or argue over the radio stations or anything like that. They stayed safe and well behaved that day. I was actually bringing the, the brother that I've sold since to use on the project that day to sit and sew and I wanted to show off the hand crank and it got a lot of attention. People loved it. Uh, this was a pillow that I made for a friend who lost her sister. That, that picture is of her, of her and her sister but I blocked out their faces for privacy, um, so the sister was a nurse and she passed away, so I wanted to honor her and the family by just doing this, so, um, you know, I made her name and nursing themed notions, and uh, I thought that was fun, so the family seemed to like that, so. This was a, another project that I made for a, a sewing friend, the lady who sold me those vintage machines that I've known for years. Uh, that her husband also passed away, and so I made things that were important to him that would represent something to her. So, you know, um, I've also blocked out the personal stuff. So, anyway, um, you know, that was fun to do to honor him in that way. This was the front of the wall hanging, the one on the right. The one on the left was the back of the wall hanging, and it was uh, it was a nice project. Um, I was sorry I had to do it. I wish he hadn't died, of course, but, um, you know, it was nice to be able to, to honor him in that way. More fabric, just stuff I bought at a quilt shop. The same picture again, you've already seen. Uh, more fabric that I bought at my brother dealer. Lovely sewing machine themed fabric. Uh, I'm scared to cut it because I love it so much I just want to leave it intact. It's so beautiful the way it is. I don't want to chop any sewing machines in half. But I, d I just think that's gorgeous fabric. So I love anything sewing machine themed. That's me doing a motorcycle embroidery on my brother with a small hoop. I actually bought that small hoop extra for it because it didn't come with one that small and I don't usually embroider at all really, but I don't usually embroider large embroider projects. So the small hoop was really necessary. And that's the last picture. So those are the kinds of things I do with my sewing machines. And that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching.